So uh, the way I see um, uh, one of the things which, uh, which our leadership, our political leadership is completely amiss in doing, they are not telling the population that we have this debt and that yeah, the other countries are demanding this from us, that we have to help other countries to go on a green development path, which should be a path with renewable energy. Renewable energy for development, I think it's, it's the, it, is, um, it is just ideal because re renewable energy is not a point source, but it's everywhere. And you can just install solar panels and windmills for, uh, for the villages to, to pump their water and to, to, to do, do every kind of, all, all those kinds of things. And you don't need the centralized um, power plants or the centralized um, transportation system for, 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 for energy. So um, uh, my, 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 th my thinking is we have to go um, towards, you know, we have, um, the, the public must understand we don't need any more growth. We, in the, in the uh, rich countries, we have so much wealth already that a little more wealth doesn't, doesn't even matter to the well-being of uh, our well-being. Well, well um, we have to help other countries to get to that level that they also have enough uh, that for, for them, yeah, in, in India and China, it still makes a big difference. Uh, yeah, um, uh, um, the, the income per, per capita in terms of life expectancy and, uh, and health and, and these kinds of things. And uh, so they have to be raised at that level where those needs are, uh, needs are met for them, which is about uh, $20 per day per person. That, uh, and um, all the rest of it has to be massively redist redistributed. We need um, a culture in which we pro uh, have much more free time. I think this is one of the selling points for this, that we can tell people, okay, you won't have so many gadgets in your home, but you will have much more free time. You will uh, be able to spend more time with your family. And, uh, um, that, um, and we, uh, another thing is um, <clears throat> the consumption and the production of renewable uh, of energy has to be coordinated. This is something which so far um, was not necessary. You just turned on the light switch and you expected the light to come out, the energy to come out. Now maybe you need a little computer in your home which uh, tells your washing machine when to start and the washing machine knows when the wind blows and then it starts the washer. And, uh, but uh, these things are not impossible, they, they, they can be done. Uh, so this, this is what I see as a, as a um, um, kind of medium-term vision. Um, I, I would say uh, I, I've been thinking, uh, especially since Thursday, a lot of carbon capture and sequestration, and I think um, we may need that technology. We may have to uh, uh, scrub carbon out of the atmosphere uh, uh, because we have been overshooting this. And for this, we need to know where to put it. So um, unfortunately, carbon capture and sequestration right now is used by the coal industry as a justification for their, uh, for their suicidal path. And we kind of have to separate that and say, um, we don't want coal companies, but we still want carbon capture and sequestration. So I, I'll, I'll stop uh, at this one. Question time? Yes, uh, you, you were first at this question. It's for Brian. Well, I think uh, you make a lot of sense, but I think I see two weaknesses in, in your concept. Mm -hmm. um, you dealt with burning fossil fuel and taking care of the output in, but you didn't address the input in. And the input in is pretty messy in fossil fuels. So, okay, you've got one half of the problem you're working on. That's one of my concerns. The other concern is one that you can answer better than I can. You're deep into carbon capture and sequestration. And I think I'm right. You can just nod your head if I'm right. 
putting it on existing plants is pretty difficult. It's a lot better if you can build a new plant that was engineered correctly so you can get that carbon out early in the process. It's much less expensive, yes. Okay, and I think that's a weakness in the assumption that we can do this for a short time because the, the <coughs> investors that put up the money to build this new plant will expect the usual amortization, which is like 40 years. So you're going to build a beautiful new plant that includes carbon capture, and you're going to have a hard time getting them to stop that plant for about 40 years. That's my guess. I was going to suggest we start with the first topic, the input end. So that's a question. Let's shelve that. Let's hold it for a few minutes because I want to ask you about that because I'm not clear on what you mean. Um, but with respect to building new plants, that's where the politics can play a role. In the state of California passed a law in 2006 restricting CO2 emissions from, well, to 1,100 pounds per megawatt hour. That's the typical emissions rate of a natural gas-fired power plant. And the typical emissions rate of a coal-fired power plant is twice that. So they effectively said, you either full fuel switch or if you insist on going in for any power that comes into California. So even if that plant is built in Utah or New Mexico or Colorado or Wyoming or wherever, if it supplies energy to California, it's, it cannot supply that power unless it adheres to this, this cap on CO2 emissions from that plant. The, uh, again, the, the, the message is fuel switch or if you're going with coal, capture that CO2, put it into the ground. And a couple of companies out of Los Angeles have decided we're going forward with coal-fired power plant because it is a, a fuel source that, because of the more rigorously evaluated estimates of reserves, uh, to them it's a better forecast of sustainable fuel source. Whereas natural gas is, you know, right now we're at pretty cheap natural gas, but in two years it may be ten times as expensive. Who knows? Well, not 10 times, but certainly uh, the fluctuation is, uh, the potential for fluctuation is pretty huge. So this is coming out of my discussions with the power plant folks. So the, uh, uh, by passing this legislation, at least two companies, and now that's not a lot, but at least two companies in Southern California are planning to build new power plants with IGCC technology, <coughs> integrated gasification combined cycle that's effectively um, creating hydrogen or some other fuel, gasifying coal before uh, burning it and that combusting that fuel so that you can uh, uh, produce a pure CO2 stream as part of the uh, output um, as opposed to having to needing to scrub the, the uh, flume, the flue gases. Uh, CO2 comes out fairly purely out of IGCC and other advanced coal technology. So it's, it's something that must be legislated it, it won't happen unless it's legislated, mandated. You're right, I believe, I absolutely agree with you. It's a faulty part of the equation unless it's legislated. In California, it has been legislated and it is happening. Now that's just for California, but they are the biggest power users in the West. Okay, so how are you gonna get that new plant turned on in 10 or 20 years? Uh, when renewables become less expensive than running that power plant, that's when it gets turned off. That's a good argument. So it's uh, that that's that's the only way it's going to become turned off. And economics drive all of this, and that's why my burning question. We still need to come back to the input side. Your your question, but I keep coming back as I listen to um, my fellow panelists speak. I you know my layout has been what I think, and it, this is again opinion. What I think can happen. Um, uh, my question for you gentlemen is. Can those solutions happen realistically? I, and this is just a, I'm not saying I disagree. I'm saying, I'm asking you the question, really. Can it happen practically based on what we know? It's, uh, I think it would be terrific to effectively set up, uh, and this is probably even more pie in the sky to have uh, than, than anything I've proposed, uh, to have, uh, uh, grids, and again, this gets back to the smart grid technology, one of your questions, where you use renewables where the sun is up to supply power to where the sun's down. And 
uh, you know, that gets back 